Chapter Twenty Five of Stories of the Victoria Cross by Frank Mundell. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. In South Africa, the biggest English war of recent times has proved that Britons will still do and dare for their country and their comrades. From the commencement of the war to the time when this is being written in the early spring of 1901 nearly 40 awards of the coveted cross have been made to soldiers of all ranks engaged in it it has been pointed out in parliament that if the cross is going to be distributed at this rapid rate it will cease to have its unique value and it has been contended that for a man to rescue a wounded comrade left on the field even though he does so under a deadly rain of bullets is nothing more than is to be expected of the average briton comment on this question must of necessity be debarred from these pages but the crosses which have been gained for the rescue of fallen comrades in the fight are the reward of such conspicuous gallantry inspired as much by brotherly pity as by the instinctive sense of duty that they well deserve a place in this book at colenso one of the earlier actions in the war the wounded of the fourteenth and fifteenth batteries of the royal field artillery were placed in sheltered corners in a donga close behind the guns there they lay suffering keen physical pain some of them in the agonies of death to move from behind the sheltered positions was to be the target of hundreds of boer marksmen and to add to the troubles of the sufferers there was no one in the donga to dress or bind their wounds a message was sent to the rear asking for a medical officer and soon major william Baptai of the royal army medical corps rode out to undertake the duty his horse was hit three times but he reached the donga and shortly afterwards he was busily engaged in tending the fallen soldiers from one to the other he went performing his much-needed officers under a heavy rifle fire strange to say he was not once hit and later in the day he was one of those who rescued the ill-fated lieutenant roberts son of the commander-in-chief under a heavy fire these intrepid deeds made him a worthy recipient of the honour of the cross on the fifth of january nineteen hundred a reconnaissance in force by our soldiers was taking place near colesburg lieutenant now captain sir john milbank was retiring under fire with a small patrol of the tenth hussars whilst keeping a keen lookout in the direction of the enemy he sustained a severe wound in the thigh and almost simultaneously he observed that the pony of one of his men had fallen exhausted leaving the soldier at the mercy of some boars who had dismounted in order to take more deadly aim lieutenant milbank did not hesitate in spite of his dreadful wound he rode out into the hail of lead took the man up onto his horse and galloped triumphantly with him back into camp and comparative safety thus adding his name to the glorious list of heroes shortly before this sergeant martineau of the protectorate regiment had distinguished himself by rescuing a fallen comrade the deed was done during the retirement from the fight at game tree the result of a brilliant sortie from besieged mafeking the order to retire had been given when sergeant martineau noticed that corporal le camp was lying helpless about ten yards from the boer trenches struck down by a boer bullet 
about a hundred and fifty yards from the trenches there were some bushes he believed that if only he could get his comrade into the shelter afforded by them scant though it was he might be able to staunch the blood that was flowing all too quickly from his wounds the thought was no sooner conceived than it was put into execution running quickly to the corporal he half carried half dragged him to the bushes and applied the bandages so much needed a boar bullet struck him in the side the next might be yet more deadly but he still continued his careful tendance of the helpless man again came the order to retire and he picked the corporal up once more and tottered along with him another bullet and yet another jarred his frame and he sank to the ground exhausted but they were now in the ranks he and his helpless comrade and willing hands secured the safety of both sergeant martineau got the cross but possibly he would exchange even that for his arm which had to be amputated at the shoulder at the same fight and under exactly the same circumstances trooper ramsden of the protectorate regiment won the cross by carrying his brother away out of range of the boer bullets the fifth dragoon guards share the honours for gallantry of this sort on october the thirtieth eighteen ninety nine second lieutenant john norwood went out from ladysmith in charge of a small patrol composed of men of his regiment suddenly a murderous fire was opened on them from the enemy who were posted on a ridge six hundred yards distant the patrol had not come out to fight neither were they as yet cornered there was therefore only one thing to do they retired at full speed but lieutenant norwood saw that one of his men had dropped and he rode back a distance of three hundred yards to where the fallen trooper lay dismounted lifted the man on to his back and leading his horse with one hand walked out of the lead storm which never ceased an instant luckily he was not hit so that he has nothing to discount the delight of possessing the decoration on march the thirteenth nineteen hundred a small party of the tenth hussars having destroyed the railway north of bloemfontein found that their path to the camp lay through the boer lines in the early dawn they set out on their perilous journey the enemy's piquets lay concealed in a deep spruit the first of a series which the hussars had to cross they outnumbered the british by four to one it might have been ten to one for aught they knew only their path lay across the spruits cautiously they advanced to the first and when within a short distance of it they discovered that it was only to be entered in single file who should be the first to venture no time was to be lost the piquet might become aware of their presence at any moment might know of it and be waiting finger on trigger for the first figure to come into sight there is always a man in a british regiment who will take the post where the greatest danger lies sergeant engelhart pushed forward and dashed into the spruit closely followed by the others the piquet were taken completely by surprise they hesitated whether to fly or to fight were the british strong in numbers they did not know until the little party had dashed through their midst and were well away out of the spruit then they recovered themselves and followed in hot pursuit one two more spruits had been successfully passed the fourth was attempted but it was tearing work for the horses 
and sapper webb could not persuade his steed to attempt the fourth bank the rifle fire from the enemy was now heavy and shells were falling more quickly every minute but the man who had dashed into the first spruit so courageously was not the man to leave a comrade behind he turned back to sapper webb's assistance it took some time to get the hussar and his tired horse out of the spruit and the danger increased momentarily at last however he was successful the top was gained and covering webb's retreat sergeant engelhart returned to the party who pushed on without further hindrance to their own lines to tell of another candidate for the cross private bisdy of the tasmanian imperial bushman gained his cross by helping his horseless officer on the first of september nineteen hundred he was one of an advanced scouting party they were passing through a rocky defile near warm bad when suddenly the enemy opened fire from an ambuscade at very short range six out of the party there were only eight in all were hit the two accompanying officers being both wounded private bisdy offered the officer his stirrup leather to help him out of action but the wounded man needed more support than that whereupon in spite of the bullets that were raining round them thick and fast he coolly dismounted placed the officer on his own horse mounted behind him and rode safely out of range in the same skirmish the other officer lieutenant wiley returned the compliment paid to his brother in command by rescuing one of his men seeing that the man was badly wounded in the leg and that his horse had been shot under him he offered him his own horse while he took up a position behind a rock himself and began firing to cover the retreat of the rest of the party he ran a great risk of being cut off from his men even if he did not fall a victim to one of the bullets that were whizzing past him but things turned out well for him and he escaped it was a gallant deed and surely deserved the cross for it undoubtedly saved one man from death or capture while it probably did the same for the rest of the party another hero in the cause of mercy was lieutenant parsons of the essex regiment at Paderberg on february the eighteenth on the south bank of the modder river a private belonging to his regiment fell wounded and lay helpless under the full fire of the enemy he tried to crawl under cover but received another bullet wound in the stomach and rolled over incapable of further effort lieutenant parsons braved the fire and went to his assistance the man's wounds were so terrible that it was impossible to move him without dressing them and this the lieutenant proceeded to do the wounded man begged for water and twice the lieutenant went down to the river bringing back with him the grateful draught his efforts were rewarded with success he managed to carry the sufferer to a place of safety he was recommended by his superior officer for the cross but poor fellow he never lived to receive it for he was killed while displaying great gallantry at drefontaine still another instance of devotion to comrades in arms is that of captain towes of the gordon highlanders at the deadly slaughter of majors fontaine he was noticed by his commanding officer in the terrible panic of that disastrous retirement close up in the front of the firing line assisting colonel downman who had received a mortal wound this together with later events earned for him the cross 
on the thirtieth of the following april with twelve men he took up a position on mount thaber away from any supporting contingent a party of a hundred boers made for the plateau simultaneously with the small party of british neither party expected to meet the other and until they found themselves separated by only a hundred yards each party thought themselves unopposed in the possession of the hill the boers perceived that they were the stronger party and advanced up to within forty yards calling on captain tells to surrender possibly had it not been for this insult the captain would have thought it wise to retire but his only answer in the circumstances was to give a ringing command to his men to fire and as an example he himself commenced and not only did he fire but he charged forward with his twelve men against the hundred and fifty boars until they wavered and fell back and the situation was saved but captain tells's victoria cross was dearly bought for in that short deadly encounter both his eyes were shattered he will never look upon his well-earned prize such are some of the instances in which british soldiers have defied death to go to the help of brother soldiers this comradeship may be a common british attribute but all the same it is deserving of the highest reward that can be conferred we now turn to some other winners of the cross who gained the distinction in a somewhat different manner at colenso before mentioned the guns of the fourteenth and sixty-sixth batteries of the royal field artillery were drawn up five hundred yards in front of Adonga. a raking infantry fire at close range was directed on them and not one single officer or gunner remained at his post all had been wounded or killed the guns were deserted behind in the donga lay the wounded some of them with their lives ebbing silently but surely away while major william babti whose honoured name we have already recorded flitted from one to another giving such rough and ready tendance as was possible meanwhile word went along that the guns were in danger of being captured captain congreve of the rifle brigade lieutenant the hon f h s roberts son of the commander-in-chief of the king's royal rifle corps and corporal nurse of the sixty sixth battery royal field artillery resolved to save them if it were possible hooking a team to a limber they sallied forth into the shell and bullet swept open and attempted to limber up a gun but the feat was impossible captain congreve wounded ere he could begin slipped into a temporary shelter to gain breathing space no sooner was he there however then he saw the ill-fated lieutenant fall to the ground badly wounded again he came out and brought in the younger man suffering from three fearful wounds from which he never recovered he himself was shot through the leg through the toe of his boot grazed on the elbow and on the shoulder and his horse was shot in three places strangely corporal nurse escaped without hurt the cross was awarded to all three of these gallant soldiers though that of the younger officer whose prospects had been so fair was handed a melancholy relic of the dead to his sorrowing parents lord roberts heard of his son's death just before he went out from england captain reed of the seventh battery royal field artillery also was awarded the cross for a subsequent effort to rescue the guns on the occasion of the action at corn spruit on march the thirty first nineteen hundred 
two batteries of the royal horse artillery were retiring together from Chu towards bloemfontein the enemy had formed an ambush at corn spruit and before the main body were aware of their presence they had captured the greater portion of the baggage train and five out of the six guns of the leading battery when the alarm was given q battery was within three hundred yards of the spruit at once major phipps hornby who was in command gave the order to wheel about and the battery moved quickly off under a heavy fire a wheel horse of one of the guns was shot and the gun had to be abandoned together with a wagon the horses of which were killed the remainder of the battery made for some unfinished railway buildings about eleven hundred and fifty yards from the spruit where they formed up and came into action for a considerable time they continued to fire on the enemy but at last they received an order to retire the teams of horses had been removed for safety to behind the buildings and major phipps hornby foreseeing the difficulty of hooking them on while under fire ordered his men to run the guns and their limbers by hand round to the back of the buildings and hooked the teams on there the men responded gallantly assisted by some officers and men belonging to the mounted infantry and directed by the major they by superhuman efforts and dauntless courage succeeded in getting four out of the five guns round to the back under cover one or two limbers also they managed to withdraw but the work was so exhausting that it was impossible to do more and at last it became necessary to risk the horses volunteers were called for from among the drivers and were quickly forthcoming soon only one gun and one limber remained but as all the horses had been sacrificed these after four more unsuccessful attempts were abandoned meanwhile the rescued guns had been sent on one at a time and although they had to be dragged across two difficult spruits and round the head of a donga within seven or eight hundred yards of the boer guns they were triumphantly carried into a place of safety and the battery was reformed it was a daring feat everyone who took part in this gallant act was entitled to the cross but there were so many of them that the commander-in-chief at the seat of war decided that rule thirteen of the victoria cross warrant must be availed of in this case this rule provides that the cross shall be awarded to the battery or contingent collectively and that a cross should be given to one officer to be elected by his brother officers who shared in the feat one non-commissioned officer elected by his brother non-coms and one trooper or gunner or private as the case may be also to be elected by his fellow sharers in the glory now there were only two officers unwounded and therefore available for the work of saving the guns one of these was major phipps hornby and the other was captain humphreys each of these had been equally conspicuous by his gallantry and fearlessness each was equally generous in character and the result was that they nominated one another it is a pity that under the circumstances both could not have had a cross but it was eventually decided to make the award to the senior of the two that is major phipps hornby the cross for the non-commissioned officers is held by sergeant parker and those for the gunners and drivers by gunner lodge and driver glassock the story of how captain fitzclarence of the royal fusiliers city of london regiment 
won the victoria cross is as follows on october the fourteenth eighteen ninety nine the captain set out from mafeking with a squad from the protectorate regiment the men were brave enough but they were not trained soldiers and had never been in action their work was to assist an armoured train which had left the besieged town they found themselves greatly outnumbered by the enemy and for a lack of discipline they were almost in a state of panic then it was that the cool courage of captain fitzclarence inspired them with such confidence that they inflicted a severe defeat on the enemy a fortnight afterwards captain fitzclarence commanded a night sortie from the besieged town advancing silently across the open they reached the boer trenches and attacked with the bayonet killing many the captain was wounded in this encounter but that did not prevent him from leading his squad out to yet another fight during which he was severely wounded in both legs these are some of the latest examples of the way in which our soldiers by their ready and self-sacrificing courage have qualified themselves for this the most coveted of military and naval rewards the cross for valour end of chapter twenty five end of stories of the victoria cross by frank mundell